and you weren't listening, some of you. Well, I just had an interesting thought. Um, part of the part of this course is understanding that you can you sh you have to make connections between the algebra and graphical. Looking at something two different ways, and you can check your answer, and you can kind of gain some confidence that you're doing things right. So you just hopefully went through and did some algebra for this one or whichever question. You can graph this function and then use the graph to kind of verify some of these answers. If you wanted to, uh, I set it up. I put the function in, set up the window to something appropriate. And if you really want to get excited, you could uh, change this. Remember the, the thing here? Oh, I just passed it. I was too excited. Right there. Okay, ready? I'm hoping I set up the window properly. It goes pretty slow. <laughs> I actually could have gone a little higher on the on the height, but there should be an explosion. There should be an explosion. Well, no, but this is a good point. This part of this graph is shouldn't be part of the domain, right? This is it only goes up to whatever that time is ten or something like that. You can check your answers for all of these this way. If you want to find the initial speed of the thing, this is the slope of the curve at zero, right? Okay, slope of the curve at zero. That's what you want, right? So if you were to go and now do draw the tangent at zero, it gives you this, right? It gives you, you look at it, you have to be able to see the slope, the equation, that's the slope. It, it gives you, it gives you this, right? I'm using x instead of t here because that's how you graph this. The slope of the curve at zero is the initial velocity, right? We know that. But you have to be able to make connections between the graphs and the algebra that you're doing. You'll understand it better. If you want to clear out that drawing, you have to go to there, clear, draw. Oh, and then we have to wait for the ball. Okay, I, I can't do this again. <laughs> you have to wait for the ball. Now it can't even stop. Look at this. What's that? No, but then we have to wait for it to... Remind me next time to take it off the stupid ball. It pauses if you put enter, but then you have to still wait for it to graph to do anything. Um, if you want now... It goes a lot quicker without the ball traveling along. If you want now the the height or the any of the other things you found here on the calculator here using a graph. If you want the the height there, you can go calculate, find the maximum height here. I know that this is not using calculus, right? You can but you can check your answers nonetheless, right? One and maybe seven. Find the maximum height there. This should be an answer that's 3, right? It's at its maximum at 3, which is what we found right here. Okay, what's the height of the ball when the velocity is 0? That's also the maximum height. This, this 3 seconds here hits the top point there, 784 feet. Its velocity is 0 at the top. What's the velocity of the ball when it returns to Earth? If you went through and did this now and found you want to find the velocity when the position is zero you have to take the position function negative 16 t squared plus 96 t plus 640 you want to know when that is zero I think if you go down here and you divide by negative 16 what do you get here this minus what is that 6 t plus what do I have there? 40. 40. And you end up, if you want to do this algebraically, you get t plus 4, t minus 10. So t is negative 4 seconds or 10 seconds. It can't be negative unless this function represented sort of a moment in time that could go back, right? It's saying that if it could go back this way, that's where it's, if you could go four, like if this, if the rest of the graph applied, if you went four seconds back, that would be where it's at zero. But in this case, that doesn't apply, so you have to throw that away, right? 
the domain for this is from zero up to wherever. So you'd have to reject this. 10 seconds. At 10 seconds is when it hits the ground, right? Hits ground at 10 seconds. Oops. Then use that number. Okay, use that number, 10 seconds. Put that number into the velocity and you'll find out what the velocity is. Velocity at 10 is, what did we say it was? Negative 32, 10, plus 96, is that right? So it's going 224 feet per second downwards, right? That is fast. If, if you want to check this on your calculator, how could you do that? Tangent line at not at zero. Tangent line at what time? At 10, right? You want the slope of the curve over here. So you want you want to go draw number five tangent. You want to put in 10 here and see it'll draw the tangent there for you. It's saying the speed of the thing there is negative 224. You should be able to check your answers graphically. I want you to be able to make these connections. I'm going to ask you to do it algebraically, but I want you to be able to confirm things graphically. I think you gain a way better understanding by seeing what's happening using both those things. Okay? Are we okay with this, I hope? There's one other thing here I want to do at the end, which is the very last one here, because rates of change... This is tougher because we're not as familiar with... Um, rates of change for other things here.